So here we are. You've clicked the link. And this is my face. I'm not going to spend 20 minutes regaling you about whatever and then only having a short segment at the very end revealing my face. No, this is me. I don't have dark hair. I've got blue eyes. And I might disappoint a couple of you because you probably expected a completely different image, but this is me. This is the presenter that you've listened to for I don't know how many hours. And the strange thing is, is that it feels like I've been doing this for a very long time, that I have in fact been presenting to you somehow. Uh, except the only difference now is that instead of talking to the show notes, which are on the right hand side of your screen, I am talking to a camera lens. It's taken a good few weeks to get used to that dynamic. I think we've gotten it. I think we have, like I've done this take 15, 16 times now. Uh, you know what? Talking to this little camera lens. Mm. It's not as easy as it looks. These two brands are doing excellent work in their own. Is this even recording? I hope it is. Yes, it is. That's good. To understand how to do it and to get in frame and in... Oh, that's a pain. The reason for this change, very simply, is that over the years of doing this, I can't believe it's been years, but over the years of doing this, I have felt more and more confident with presenting directly to you all. In the beginning, it began with essays and long articles and in-depth descriptions. And this channel has taught me so much about watches. You know, you've almost, in a way, forced me to study more about watches. And that's what's made it such a fulfilling experience. The depth and the origins of these things and where their designs come from, that all speaks to me so much as someone who likes creating. But also things like the live streams that we do and the connection that we have made through this community the the way that you love talking about subjects other than watches and the intimacy and in a way it feels like you really enjoy the person behind the scenes so i only thought this was the natural progression forward of being able to share myself make the presentations a bit more tangible you know that i'm an actual human being and uh, it's worth sharing a bit more entertainment on this side it's definitely reinvigorated the way i like presenting so hopefully that feels the same for you I must emphasize that not much is going to change on the page. The content is going to be just the same. The subjects are going to be just the same. We're going to be discussing design. The only difference now is that I will be present, that you will be seeing my face during presentations. But other than that, that's about it, really. Um, but just before getting into the video, I want to thank you all. Those of you who have been a part of this page from the very beginning, who have been following me for the last few months, who have been spending years listening to me talking, for God knows how many hours. It's very humbling, to say the least. For anyone to have their work appreciated is very humbling, and I can't thank you enough for the continual support. Um, but yeah, enough of that. You've heard enough of me. Let's get to the actual subject and roll the new intro. It's also just great to see movements introduced every single month and the amount of effort that goes into creating these things. It's, it's crazy. But that's it. I mean, there were no real bloopers this time around, so... Sadly, you, you stuck around for nothing. See you in the next one. When you're asked what defines you as a watch enthusiast, what words do you choose? And this is a difficult question to answer because we've all gotten into this hobby for different reasons. That's what makes it pretty special is that we all have a shared opinion that we love these things, but the why is what makes it even more interesting. It's what gives us individuality. It's what makes our watch collecting journey unique. Now, some of you have asked me this question, and I've struggled with thinking about a good way of bringing it across. And the thinking is, since this is a bit of a different approach to how videos are made on this page, this discussion has to be something stand out. So the talk is going to be around a designer's opinion or philosophy around watches. I've chosen four key words that I think have definitely helped define my journey, what I've gathered from this experience of watches. And those words are obsolescence, intimacy, value, and legacy. Within those words, we can take a lot of information out of it, speaking purely about them as products, but also as objects with a bit of soul. And hopefully it'll resonate with you see a different side, a different perspective of this hobby, but at the same time, this could also introduce new people to the hobby with a different dynamic. 
If we are to break it down to first principles, watches are products. They are objects that are made to be sold. They are manufactured. But I think most of us can agree at this stage that watches are far beyond that for us as collectors. They do offer something different. And this is a special aspect to the hobby. Now, as someone who's been involved in the product industry, who's experienced quite a lot of consumable goods from kitchenware to furniture, other bits and pieces, the one thing that's always specified in a brief is the obsolescence. The product itself, whether its design or a component of its design will become obsolete in X amount of months or years. Sometimes they say 12 months, sometimes they say two years. This is something that plagues a lot of designers. I think one of the greatest fears that a designer has is that their product, that their work is going to become obsolete over time. If you're very fortunate, you can create something that is quite an icon, but otherwise your work is going to be swept aside or evolved, manipulated to sell a new product line in a few months time or a couple of years time. The downside is that most products today have a failure point. They have a component that sadly needs to be replaced and it's cheaper to replace the entire object than replace the component. And this is how the industry works. With watches, it's something different though. We think of how many products are considered ones that are disposable. We look to electronics. They have taken the world by storm. Their prices are increasing incrementally. You look at the car industry, how all of a sudden we're moving away from combustion engines to electric engines, to batteries, and all the problems that will ensue with that in the future if it's not well maintained. You can probably count on your hand how few products are made today to last. We look to things like high quality clothing, high quality furniture, these objects that are made with care, made with excellent materials. And then we look to objects like watches. Instead of being products that are built to be disposed of today, even though they are anachronistic products, we could say, since they are mechanical and they just simply tell us the time, they're also made to such a standard that they have never actually met in the past. The beauty is that the work that goes into them now far exceeds how they were produced back in the day. And the way that they are made in most cases, especially when we move to the higher end, the luxury tiers, those that are bespoke, designed and built, is that they are made to withstand a longer life. They are actually built to last. The mechanics, the technology involved, the metals used, all of these little bits and pieces make these watches more indestructible than they have ever been. So through this forwarding of technology, through this future focus, the use of these futuristic materials, these manufacturing approaches, are creating watches now where the word obsolescence is never factored in. This is something that I greatly admire about them. As products, objects that are made to be sold, they're also made with insane tolerances and a great understanding about their life and their durability. Manufacturers actually want these watches to last. They don't want them to be replaced. If a component on the watch is damaged, it gets sent in, it returns back to you better than new, and it will last for longer and longer. Also something to factor in is how long service costs have been prolonged, from five years to 10 years in some instances. These movements are better than they have ever been. And if we are to get right down to it, I think for an industry, it's a way for a manufacturer to say that they appreciate their own product. They appreciate their brand and they want to see it continue. The next word is intimacy. Now, this is a word that designers know very well because it's something that is a part of the process. We have to think about how the product is going to connect with the consumer. Simple as that. Now, with watches, the special thing about them is that before even having to design them, we know that there is already an intimate attachment with it. The design doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to appeal with certain colors and everything else. Just knowing that it's a watch, that it's a mechanical timepiece immediately pulls people in. So realistically, when we think of it as a product, it already has the intimacy fully covered. All that really needs to happen now is that the design is well configured enough that it appeals to more people. Being able to create a product that instantly connects with people is very difficult to do. Now, what else about the watch is intimate? It's not just about its design. It's not just about how it makes you feel, but it is in fact a part of you. It's a product that you wear on your wrist 24 seven. It's something that is going through life with you. It experiences so many things with you at the same time. That level of intimacy is not something that you can be sold on. 
it's something you experience. It's intimacy through experience. That connection that you make with a product that no one outside of this hobby or someone who's not very interested in watches would ever really understand. We often talk about things like the soul of the product and how it connects with the person. Most of us can agree now that the way the world is going with this digital and this technology focus, that the mechanics are being left behind, there is something really special about that value that it offers us as owners. On a daily basis, we are experiencing this mechanical product that is connected to us, that has its own heartbeat, that we in fact power ourselves. There are very few things out there that could boast about having such an intimate connection with you. The next word is value. We often talk about the word from a monetary sense, the fact that the watches are expensive and many of them can retain their value if looked after, if well chosen. But I'm talking about the value the watch actually brings to you, to your life, to your daily experiences. And I think this is something that is also insurmountable when we compare it to other products. This links to intimacy in many ways as well. The fact that it's a part of you. The fact that you're able to look down to this object and understand that it means a lot more than just being an object on the wrist. That it resembles more. If done right when buying a watch, it represents a moment in time. And this moment is permanently captured in its design as it's on your wrist. You think about those moments. You think about those times spent with it and what the experiences mean to you. The value and intimacy of watch ownership are things that I don't believe are discussed enough. And it's something that watches deserve a lot more praise for. And then finally, legacy. It's the story attached to the watch. It's the experiences it's had, the time it's spent with you. When we think about the next generation, when we think about the permanence of time that I believe the watch represents, it's something that you're giving to the next generation, it's something that you're able to share. It could be as simple as tying a brand name with a product. It can be something like handing down a family heirloom. In many ways, I believe that the watch leaves an indelible mark on us as enthusiasts, as collectors, as those who love these things beyond what they look like. They represent a lot more. One of the best things is being able to share that legacy, to be able to give it to someone one day, to share stories that this small little object has been a part of with you. The watch then is not just a product, it's a companion. It's something that tells us the value of time. It also tells you that time isn't permanent, but the beauty is that it itself is permanent in a way. It captures that essence. It's one of very few man-made things that offer immense value and intimacy, that's made to last, that's made to endure, that'll always be there for you. And that in one way or another, it represents you for generations to come.